Hello everybody, today I have something a little bit different to share with all of you. In fact, it's probably something that if you're in the ceiling fan community, you have probably already seen and heard of. But I have finally acquired one of these Bell and Howell socket ceiling fans. It took me a while to locate one of these. They are sold at Lowe's, and as it would be, of course, only two of the Lowe's here in the greater Seattle area actually carry this item instead of every single location. So I had to wait for a time that I would eventually be in one of the areas that actually has this item, and sure enough, I was, stopped by, and they had them on the shelf in the light bulb aisle. I thought this would be kind of in the as seen on TV aisle, as that's what it says on the package here. Now, I don't watch a lot of television. I do watch a lot of YouTube, though, and I have not seen this product in an advertisement before. So, whatever to that. Maybe that's why they put it in the light bulb aisle instead of the as seen on TV aisle. But it makes sense to be in the light bulb aisle. In fact, you're putting it right here in a standard medium base incandescent socket. So, anyway, enough of trying to find one of these because here it finally is. I have also seen online some newer designs of this packaging. Uh, this is, a, I believe, the older design of this package. And the other issue with this thing is, is that this is not cheap. This thing is $50. Do I think it's worth $50? I guess we'll find out by the end of the video. Hopefully I will remember to say something about that. But $50 later, here we have a ceiling fan that is instantly installable in your medium base socket. So on the front of the packaging, we can obviously see the product itself. It has three fan speeds, three light settings, no wiring naturally, you just screw it in and you go. A thousand lumens, I believe it's a, yeah, uh, daylight colored LEDs, which seem to be super popular nowadays. Sure, daylight has its applications, but I'm not much of a daylight person when it comes to lighting in my home. Now, out here in the garage, it's perfect. You're working on a project. It's nice having that, you know, bright white light. And I'm sure that's where you'd use this thing, but here they have pictures of your dining room with this thing. And it apparently comes with an adapter that you screw into the uh, recess can light if you need it to be down lower, but I'm sure that would look absolutely ridiculous. And of course, it comes with a type of remote here if you don't want to use the light switch on the wall. So that's the front of the packaging. On the side here, we have pretty much the same information that we just looked at. Looks like the same information again. And yeah, pretty much all the, all the sides are the same. We do get some information here. It's about 16 inches uh, in blade length. It's 15.75 on the bottom. We can see that is patent pending. And uh, let's see, I thought, yeah, it's uh, made by this Emson company. And there's the top. Now, when I found these on the shelf at the Lowe's, I noted that every single one of them had their seals broken on the ends once. And then they were re-taped up with these uh, circular plastic tape, same exact thing. It's like they reopened it in the factory like they forgot something or had to take something out i'm not sure but as you can see there's a doubling of it there's there's two for each of them and, and they were all like that uh, of course they were all resealed with the correct looking seal but i'm not sure what they did there so now we just need to well break this seal again and see what's inside so let's get a uh an opening device here and I will break the seal one last time okay so pull this out cardboard I always wanted cardboard okay well, there's the blades. Okay, this is already hysterical because I thought the blades would be bigger than this. And uh, here's my hand. <laughs> oh boy, okay, well, let's take this out first. This looks like it's just our instructions or something. Why does everything need to come in a plastic bag nowadays? This is so wasteful. 
these these two pieces of paper you couldn't just put them in there you had to put them in a plastic baggie what are you trying to protect it from getting wet or something it's not going to work there's our instructions for assembly of course we're just going to put it together the best way that we think it goes together because who's going to read instructions to be real honest about it so these sides of the package here have nothing i always like you know wasted packaging there's the motor down there. Okay, let's see what we get here. Well, we get this really long socket adapter. That's kind of handy. You know, if you got a fixture where the light source needs to be in a certain spot for the optics. This base reminds me a lot of those, like, plug-pull chain adapters. It looks very much like one of those. 660 watt. Okay, sunlight. Definitely heard that brand. They make those uh, different screw-in adapters, like the pull chain adapter that I was just talking about. So no wonder uh, some of the manufacturing here looks familiar. It's by a familiar company. Okay, and here we have the blades. And some foam. Foam is always good. Got the uh, two separate packages of the blades here. And... I'm kind of confused what you need the screws for. Oh, I suppose mounting the uh, remote to the wall. Yeah, where is that? We got our blades. Here's the motor. There's the remote. Is there anything beneath this? No. Okay. So here's the remote with its little holder. Again, with the plastic. I'm tired of the plastic. Yeah, pretty standard remote that's used for everything imaginable. Uh, yeah, every Chinese product you've ever wanted has this style and size of remote. And you get your little holder there. Very nice. Holds it very good. Okay. And here is the fan motor itself. More plastic, naturally. There's our medium screw base. I wonder if it's a synchronous motor or a standard one. Well, we'll have to see when it turns on what it does. Uh, product name, socket fan light. There's a model, it was made in December of last year. I also wanted to really pick one of these up because I don't know exactly how safe this would be. I mean, you could put this in anything. You want to put this in a table lamp? Sure, why not? I mean, there's no restriction on it, really. And uh, who knows how long it'll actually be on store shelves. Yep, because I'm going to break it. Okay, well, there's definitely some clips here holding on this cover. I'm not going to take it off. It already feels kind of flimsy. Now I'm bumping the camera around. I apologize for that. Let me uh, fix that here. Okay. Yes, that is the kind of fan speed that I wanted. So, obviously, I'm pretty sure we just got to slide these on. Yep, they clip right into place. You can have the two-bladed option here for a classic look. Totally. Okay. Okay, it's looking more decent now. There we go. Socket ceiling fan. And of course, the ridiculous adapter so that you have a down rod. Because you know every ceiling fan needs to have a down rod. Well, I think now we just need to put this thing into a light socket and see what we get. Okay, so I turned off the other ceiling fans here in the room. Uh, they were just this little heritage spinner and of course the Emerson heat fan which is uh, definitely going to be way more powerful than this thing but while they're spinning down let me go over and turn on the light switch We've got to remember to take the plastic tab out of the remote here so let me go and turn on the light switch for the room And we start right off with the light. Okay. It's a little bit glary, to be honest. But it definitely puts out light. Very bright. 
I wish it was uh, color changing or, uh, you know, you could choose a color. I don't know if I'd choose this kind of bright to the eyes. Okay, so let's hit the light button. Oh, it beeps. Isn't that just something? Okay, well, there's dimmer. Yeah, I can, I can uh, definitely use that a bit better. Yeah, dim and medium are good. Bright is uh, a little much for the eyes. We'll turn that off so we can get a better view of it, though. And let's hit the fan button here. Not too bad. Okay, so I do believe it's a synchronous motor, if I'm getting that terminology correct, because it had to um, correct its direction there at the beginning. You saw how it went backwards a little bit. Um, those kind of motors, I believe, are used in like the carousel of the microwave, for example. It doesn't matter what way it turns. It's a very nice flat motor. Um, but here it does matter what way it turns. So there's, I believe, like a spring or something in there that helps it go in the correct direction. But anyway, there's the first time. Let's push the button again. I can definitely feel it. Um down by my legs here. That must be medium, because we just did low, I'm assuming. And I suppose let's do high. That definitely has a little bit of wobble to it, as you can maybe kind of see. Let me go stand beneath it. Oh yeah, it puts out a decent amount of air here. I'm uh, quite surprised, to be honest. Yeah, I'm, uh, wow. I mean, nowhere near the output of a heat fan. But it definitely puts out a breeze. It's not some little wimpy thing like I was expecting. Of course, you can have the light on. Okay, let's uh, turn it off and see what we get. Yep, slows down and stops pretty quick, just the nature of that motor. Let's turn it on again. And I turned it back off. I want to see if we can get that little jitter when it starts at the beginning again. No, it's doing it the right way. Okay. I'm going to try it one more time. I have one of those portable ceiling fans. I believe I have a video of it somewhere, and it has the same type of motor in it. See how it did a little bit of a back there before it went the right direction? That's what I'm talking about. Okay, let's get the camera a little closer. Yeah, so I'm impressed with the air output here. Maybe you can hear it in the microphones, but... Yeah, wow. That was high. Okay, so that's off. See how it did a little bit of a, I had a start there. Yeah, I'm actually quite impressed. Too bad it wobbles like it does. Yeah, not, not a bad breeze. Let me try it on low. It's gentle. Of course, something you have to think about is it definitely has noise from the motor. And then of course there's an off button. You can turn it off and it just uh, is off everything. I wonder if you hit off, does it turn on in the same settings? No. So you have to do that manually yourself. Oh, there, there you see how it had to do it. Okay, let's try another thing. Okay, so I have everything set to medium now. Let's see if it remembers when I turn it off and on. Now, I won't be able to see it because the switch is over here. But 
Okay, it's off. Let's uh, turn it on. Well, I don't know if it remembered the light setting. Let's see here. Let's try to... No, it looks like it went right to bright. Let's turn it off and on. Well, that didn't do anything. Or was it off to begin with? Okay, let's uh, turn it on again. Oh, it, it had dim there for a second. Let's turn the fan on. Okay, let's turn it off again. Let's do it again. No, so it seems to just default back to... It just defaults back to the light at the highest setting. It doesn't really do anything else. Yeah, overall, I mean, on the high setting, I'm pretty impressed. So overall, would I say it's worth $50? I don't know about that. Maybe $25. I mean, this adapter is kind of nice. You could use it for a multitude of other things. So maybe that's worth $5 being how unique it is. So maybe $30 altogether. But I don't know about $50. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things that as seen on TV, so they can charge really whatever they want for it. But it's also a pretty neat novelty item, so I'm glad I picked it up to add to the collection here. A couple different things to note is uh, the thickness of the plastic here. It is quite thin, but it seems okay durability-wise. Too bad it has that little bit of a wobble. It could just be for manufacturing and getting something a little out of spec. But not too bad. It's a pretty interesting product. Uh, can't say I've seen anything else really like it before. I know a long, long time ago they made little fans you could put into a socket, a socket fan type thing. Um, but they were like six inches or something like that. But those are really hard to find nowadays. Would I put this thing into use? Well, I don't know. Probably not. I'm a big fan of these PL adapters. And that's what I use out here and anywhere that I can. I just love these things, so I'm probably going to continue to use that out here, but this is definitely a unique novelty thing, and I'm glad I could share it with all of you. So I really do hope you enjoyed this quick little video of the Bell & Howell Socket Fan. They could have called it Socket Ceiling Fan or whatever, but it is what it is. It's, it is a fan light it is it is both of those things and it does go in a socket so I, I guess they're they're not wrong there once again i do hope you enjoyed this video and also please comment rate share and subscribe and thank you very much for watching